going to look this time at um, the identity of Israel to God, the way that he sees Israel. And in fact, it's, it is not even how he sees Israel, but how he sees Israel. <clears throat> we can explain that as we go. All right, so now let's go to Exodus chapter 4, verse 21. And now we're going to start getting into some more of the real preparations for what we want to get into. Um, Exodus 4, verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, See that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, that I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I know that from other quarters and other foreign places you have heard teaching on this, possibly. I don't believe it's going to be like this. I don't believe it is. Uh, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, let my son go. Let my son go. Let my son go. Okay? That he may serve me. Serve how? Do you remember? By sacrifice. By sacrifice. By sacrifice. Let him come to me. Praise God. Okay? <clears throat> And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Okay. So let me read this little bit here that I wrote. God instructed Moses what to do and what to say before Pharaoh. He would, he would perform all the marvels and, all, and he would speak specific words. He would say, Israel is my firstborn son and to let my son go. Um, and I put in parentheses, let my son, represented by the firstborn of Israel, that go, that he may worship me by being sacrificed. And because Pharaoh will refuse, now I will slay your firstborn son. All right. So this is... Um, Let me just say there are many examples of God wanting his firstborn given to him. And, the, and in many cases, they were representative of Christ, his son, his firstborn, his only begotten, but still the firstborn. Um, and they did not follow through or they did not have to follow through. These are some of the things we will get into to see the difference of motivation in people and how God deals with it. All right. We're just, again, we're just setting the stage right now. So uh, the 10 plagues, he sent bitter plagues upon the oppressors. Um, and as we said, it really only caused greater resistance from Pharaoh and greater oppression and hardness. Um, and this was the same exact thing when Jeremiah said, don't fight against Babylon. Don't resist. Go, go into the land. I, you know, I'll take care of you. You know, I'll bring you back. This is what he told Jeremiah. I'll bring you back in 70 years. I have a plan. And all they did was fight and use whatever power they had, which is exactly what we do when we think there's an enemy that's going to, what you know, whatever, a person, a situation that is unfair. Um, when we cannot see the Lord, because we live in a world of cars and planes and and houses and yards and we don't live in son we don't live in him we don't find our being in him we live paul said in him we live and move and have our being have our being and uh, so it's going to be impossible to translate 
God's language into ours because it's a foreign language. It's not, it's not a language that we commonly speak unless we have soaked and saturated and sought. The three S's. <laughs> it's the smartest thing I've said all week right there. <clears throat> um, so, uh, it does make your oppressors worse. There's many proofs of that. You know, a soft answer turneth away wrath. Well, how simple is that? But that's, that's just a little deep off of the off of the vine there, you know. It's just, there is this, there's this fullness of that kind of life that overcomes when we think that that's giving up. All right. All right, we're ready to go to Exodus 5 now, verse 3. We'll read a little bit through this, but I will emphasize some of the things that are important here. Exodus 5, verse 3 through 21. They said, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days' journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Let, and this, this sounds like what we read in chapter 4. It's not. It's not the same thing lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. All right, so basically they're saying you need to let us go because we need to go sacrifice lest we not give him, which this is, folks, this is just simply not giving him Christ. It is, it is about his son. Let my son go. Give me Christ. Give me my son, and we give him Christianity instead of Christ. And we do it in all of our service because we serve God and we serve the church instead of allow the son within us to be the life, the life I now live in the flesh, instead of letting it be that. We come up with good ideas and good plans and good things, and that's fine. But the, the son will give himself. You don't have to be religious. You know what I mean? You, you don't have to worry about serving it's not about not doing anything he gives himself he always gives himself and so that's that's his call at this point that's what he's saying bless you um and the king of egypt said unto them wherefore do uh, do ye moses and aaron let the people go from their works get you unto your burdens. And Pharaoh said, because he's, he's, he's reacting. He's reacting. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tail of the bricks which they did uh, make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon them. Folks, the enemy, the flesh, everything is going to distract you and keep you busy. It's going to lay more work. The worst thing you could say is, I want to go, I want to be motivated by the son, and I want to go to him in relationship to sacrifice. And the enemy say, well, we got to dump some more junk on them. But it's also the best thing that you could say. Because it's, you know, that is our father. I mean, it's our father. Do we... Do we know that? Do we act like that? Do we ever even think of it? Do we say, you know, Father, not my will, but thine be done. So Pharaoh's reacting to a simple thing. Let my son go just to go a three days journey and sacrifice, okay, at this point. 
Um, and so what is the distraction from? The distraction is from God and sacrifice. <laughs> Pretty simple, you know. And it's just everything gets harder. It gets busier. It gets more. <clears throat> Verse 10, and the taskmasters of the people went out and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where you find it. Straw is used to make the bricks. They put it with mud, and that's how they make bricks, and that's how they build. Um, yet not aught of your work shall be diminished, meaning nothing's going to, we're not going to slack up on what's expected of you. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. All right. Wood, hay, and stubble. You ever heard that phrase in the Bible? Wood, hay, and stubble. Think about it. Um, and the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks. Fulfill your works, your daily tasks. It could be said in a nice way. I could say, be faithful to your works and your daily tasks, okay? Being faithful, you know, and, and I'm sorry, now I'm gonna mix in a little ex-hippie. I don't know how ex I am, <laughs> but, but working for the man is not gonna satisfy anybody. Working for the man, Jesus Christ. And, and when I say that, I don't mean in the capacity of a pastor or a minister or a Sunday school teacher or a worship leader or whatever. I'm talking about being the vessel of the life of the Son to the Father, which is what this is all going to blow up and be about over and over and over. But it's going to be in every scenario and every life that, that's mentioned in the Word that is important. It's going to just keep bringing this, the, the, a certain pattern around, around, and it will depend on how each person reacts to the pattern, where they're at. Um, fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw, and the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh taskmaster had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have you not fulfilled your tasks? Does that go off in anybody's head here? Oh, okay, never mind. I don't want to know. <laughs> uh, in making brick both yesterday and today as heretofore. Then the officers of the children of Israel came out and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants. And they say to us, Make brick, and behold, thy servants are beaten. But the fault is in thine own people. But he said, you are idle, you are idle. <laughs> I think he thinks they're idle. They're not idle. They just want the Lord. You know? Well, why are you, why are you sitting down? There's so much to do. Why, why are you picking up that Bible? Don't, don't pick up that. Don't. Don't go after the Lord. Don't show any initiative at all, and the work won't get harder. It will keep you busy, but it won't get harder. But he said, you are idle, you are idle. Therefore, ye say, let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Go therefore now and work. For there shall no straw be given you, yet shall ye deliver the tale of bricks, meaning the amount that you're supposed to every time. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case after it was said, ye shall not diminish aught from your bricks of your daily tasks. All right, so they leave Pharaoh. It's gotten bad. It is all about work and doing your daily tasks and fulfilling what you're supposed to do on that front. And so they leave there with things worse and they go and they meet with Moses and Aaron. And, uh, and they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh and they said unto them, the Lord look upon you and judge because you have made our savor to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. All right, so another just warning. 
don't try to get the people to go out to the Lord in, in the nature of the son to sacrifice because they're going to hunt you down. <laughs> and they're going to blame all that the enemy brings on you on them because it's going to be, well, it, before you said this stuff and came along with this stuff, everything was, a, our lives were simple. Yeah, they were not. I mean, you're still busy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you're still, still serving the man. Did you have your hand up? Yeah. Yes. Well, it's a pattern. It's a pattern. That's why I hide behind this metal thing. Because <laughs> I can pick it up and go like this and hold it up. <laughs> and that's why the bullet holes are. They missed. <laughs> All right. Um, they're, they're saying basically this is going to kill us. Okay. You know, Pharaoh is going to kill us with all the work. But they were crying by reason of the work before that. Now they're crying by reason of the work because of the Lord showing up. Well, okay, you can die by the work or you can die and sacrifice to the Lord out with the Lord by Christ. At least with Christ in that sacrifice, there's what's called a resurrection. There is resurrection. All right, let's see. Where are we at? I hadn't been looking. I, okay. Well, yeah. All right. So I need to introduce this next part <clears throat> because after the nine plagues, um, let's see, am I really ready to fully say that? Yeah, I'm okay. Israel is thinking these miracles, these, this power move by God, we figured God would be more powerful and it's not working. There has to be a better way. Okay. Well, there does have to be a better way than power, folks. So God announces a new initiative. He announces a new approach. He is going to deal, and here's what I want you to hear. From now on, he is going to deal with firstborns all the way around. I don't know, probably further than you realize at this point, but maybe not, maybe not. He's only going to deal with firstborns. This is going to be his main initiative, the Lord's main, and he's going to forget every other initiative at this stage. All right. So, um, so who are the firstborns? Help me out. Give me one. Well, no, we're talking about in the Exodus story. Okay. How about the firstborn of Egypt. How about the firstborn of Israel? Is that all? How about the firstborn lamb? And how about Israel as a whole being the firstborn? Four, four firstborns in this story, and they're all the main thing that's going on the main thing and everybody else is just being pulled along by however that, those firstborns are dealt with. All right, so if we've missed that, 
then the story of the Exodus can become brand new to you. And it, and you know, as I said, when we get to a certain juncture, it's going to blow your mind how and the, the things that God does in relationship to the firstborn. It's going to blow your mind because it's not about, um, well, let me just say this. One of the main things when people talk about the, the Passover and the Exodus is what? The blood on the doorpost, right? And the death of the firstborn. Uh, you should get into the prophets and start reading when they bring it up. They don't even bring up the blood on the doorpost or the death of the firstborn. I mean, I was reading that and I went, these guys aren't even talking about what we think is important. <laughs> and it's, they're, they're speaking for God. And when that stuff happens, I just go, Randy, you need to readjust now. You need to hear this prophet was speaking to them. He wants to speak to you. And, and to go, okay, well, what are you emphasizing? Or even in Deuteronomy when it's brought up. Don't mention the blood. I mean, the blood, the blood, the blood. That's the big deal. Doesn't even mention the blood. Doesn't mention the death of Egypt's firstborn. What's, what's it mention? Eating the lamb. Eating the lamb. That's the emphasis. All right. So. Uh, let me just read this and I'll see. We'll probably quit after I read this. It is a fact that most of what people focus on in the story of the Exodus is the substituted death, the substituted dead lamb pertaining to its blood on the doorpost. It's not even that, it's not even that it died or they ate it. It is that they put, they, that it was dead, therefore they got the blood, but that's not the big deal. They put it on the door plum, and the death angel saw the blood and went over. Now, you don't, you, you don't hardly see after that. I mean, even, even the Passover, when they celebrated it, there's nothing about the blood on the doorpost. I mean, and yet Christians, we go, yeah, that's the blood. Uh, plead the blood. Where, where do you get that from? Plead the blood. You know, it's like a, a demon comes in here. I plead the blood against you. He's not the death angel. He's just a demon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Plead the blood. I'm going, you know, just say in the name of Jesus, get the fool out of here. In Jesus' name. And I, last time I did that, which was on Mike Remembers. <laughs> I said, all I do when I deal with the enemy is I say, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. And somebody fell out on the floor and started shaking. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. I wasn't talking to you, but we, now that we know you're there, and I went over there and knelt down and we dealt with it. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> do you remember who it was? Okay. It was her. <laughs> not really. Not, not, not really. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. It wasn't Deb. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, uh, but the main story involves the firstborns, and they're all, each angle of the firstborns is all different. It's all different. We usually focus on nothing about the firstborn in this story except Egypt's firstborn. I mean, even when we realize that Israel's firstborn was spared, we don't really think of them in, the, in going out. We just see Israel leaving. Right? I mean, I mean maybe, I'm, maybe that's the way I've always seen it. But it's usually just, we just kind of see, well, okay, the deed's done. The, the death angel went by, we're saved, they're dead, we're leaving, and you're not going, the, the saved ones are the firstborn. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal, isn't it? I mean, it, this, and this is only just a slight 
change that we're talking about right now, it gets drastic when you see the real issue of God's heart dealing with these things. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here so that I can keep my place. And let's see. It's not very far away. We should be able to get to it in the next class. This part, probably the second class, this part is like you start seeing this thing from God's perspective instead of being down here in the earth and going, oh, let's put blood here and, you know, let's put this here and let's get out of here. And, you know, this, this sort of, you're up here and you're looking and you're going, oh, my God, you, you got stuff going on you see things different than us you are you, and we always thought you just decided at this moment you know that you were going to come deliver us and all of this and it's got nothing to do with all of our silly ideas compared to your mind so be in prayer would you for the for these classes because um you know some of them are taking some time to build to build and but but it's worth it it's worth it because get those scriptures in you and you know for sure this is what god said you know your view is really built on the scriptures then and the scriptures are built on the heart of god out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaking okay can we can we just all come up here and get in a circle and hold hands just for a second and then i'll release you but i i really think it'd be good to seal this Oh, Patty, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. We should have come around and got around you. Yeah, can you sit? Is it okay to sit down? She's been wrestling with God. <laughs> and you won. <laughs> but I mean... You won. You won. You're crippled. <laughs> yeah. You're wounded. You're broken. That's good. That's a good thing. Father, we just thank you for what you want to do and say and the change you want to do, the change of life, the time of life, the time of life that you want to bring about. And it's, it's not business as usual. And it's not just uh, hearing teaching. It is a pursuit, a heart pursuit that says, Jesus, Speak to me your mind, and, and I want to reject my mind. Father, help us to, to, to uh, begin to break and then to melt and then to be poured into of your life and light and mind and free us from human reasoning. So, Father, thank you. Bless your word, not not these classes unless your word speak beyond anything I say it's not about me or what I'm saying speak beyond anything I say here and Lord may there be a hunger to look in some of these scriptures and prepare our hearts in advance for what, you're, what you want to bring to us so we, we thank you we put it in your hands we thank you in Jesus name All right, thanks guys.